So being your own best coach, we'll talk in a second about how to do that, but let's talk about why we would want to do that first. Well, as you progress through your sport, you'll find that you look back on one or maybe two coaches that you really liked. Now, one of those coaches might have just been extremely likable, or they might have been a family friend, or they may have worked their way into being a family friend as a result of being your coach. I don't know. I'm not talking about the likable people. I'm talking about the people that did the most for you in your sport. So the best coach you ever had as far as making you improve, helping you to be better, helping you to win more, and be happier in your sport, and climb the ranks that you want to climb. So wouldn't it be cool if that best coach was around you all the time? Or if you could just go and magically make the best coach on earth for you, your coach all the time. That would be amazing. I mean, I've experienced some best coaches. Every time they were around me, I got way better, way quicker. Now, that's not reasonable to expect. Unless you're the best player on earth, and you happen to be living in the country the best coach on earth lives in, and they happen to be coaching the right teams, the right age group, it's probably not gonna happen for you. However, you could be your own best coach. So you do that, you become your own best coach by paying more attention than your coach can pay. So let me explain. If there are 12 people on your team, then one coach can either give you all of their attention, one twelfth of the time, or they can give you one twelfth of their attention all the time. At no point in time are you going to own that coach's attention for an entire season. And they're certainly not going to be there if you get together with some friends and play some pickup ball, or if you uh, go practice on your own, or hire another coach to help you outside of the bounds of practice. They're certainly not going to be there for those things. So you're never going to have enough attention from any coach you'll ever have. You could have 100% of your own attention, though, of your own time. You could be paying attention all the time and then refer to your coach in that one twelfth of the time they can give you and say, I'm working on these things. I think I've got it under control, but I am really confused about or I'm really frustrated about or I really need help with this one particular thing, this one particular skill. Maybe it's passing. Say, you know what? The time you've got for me in this practice, give it to me while we're doing the passing. Just give me your time during the passing and the rest of it I've got covered for right now. So you've got the attention of an outside source, which is really valuable when you need it. So the thing that you're struggling with, you don't know why, you need some help. You need some new ideas or some new techniques or you need some observation about what you're doing that you can't tell on your own. That's great, use an outside coach for that but you should be monitoring your own stuff all the time. So we've talked about doing research and practice. This is a part of being your own best coach. I take practice, I take uh, notes, mental notes, when my athletes are doing their thing. I take mental notes when I'm doing my own thing. I'm constantly learning. I'm trying to be my own best coach. I'm asking you to get better at this skill because it benefits you so much. So nobody should know better than you how you've been serving on this particular day. No one should know better than you how many balls you've hit in or out, and of the balls that have hit in, how many times have they hit the area. This doesn't have to be very, well, uh, by the way, it doesn't have to be specific and exact. You don't have to memorize and have some photographic memory that perfectly nails every single one of your stats. I'm talking about pretty specific feelings. I'm missing hardly at all, which is how you want to be. And then you go, okay, since I'm hardly missing, I can take some more risk now. But if you don't know how much you've been missing, you don't. You just take risk or you don't. Who knows? You're a maniac. And your coach ends up getting annoyed with you because they're taking better notes about what you're doing than you are. They know you've been missing too much, and so they get on your case. And for you, who hasn't been paying attention, it comes out of nowhere. This guy's just all over you for no particular reason. And what really should have been happening was you should have known better than your coach how well you were doing and managed your risk to be appropriate for who you were on that particular day and that particular play. So being your own best coach has a ton of advantages, not the least of which being <laughs> a better use of the resource of your actual coach. And your actual coach tends to really like you because if you know how you've been doing, you can manage your risk and you're just not a problem. They deal with other people that aren't taking those mental notes, that aren't researching what they're doing in practice and improving on their own 
These are things that being your own best coach can do for you. Consider it. Take some mental notes. Use practice and competitions as research time. Constantly be updating yourself on exactly how you're doing, what you need to do to get to the next level, and you can always have the best coach you'll ever have with you every single time you practice.